Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, this morning, we had a fantastic session that suggests that what we do as faculty in the classroom truly matters. And what I can tell our speaker today is that the faculty at the Burrow School of Business and Entrepreneurship are world-class leaders in their field who are committed to student transformation, which is why today's session on micro internships is so important to us. We understand that micro internships can be a tool for us to use in our courses. We are delighted to welcome our guest speaker today, Dr. Daryl D. Green. He is the Dickinson Chair of Business Professor at Oklahoma Baptist University. We thank him in advance for bringing his expertise to us today. Colleagues, please join me in welcoming Dr. Daryl Green. Well, uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Dean Dunn, for that uh, outstanding introduction. It, it makes me want to go jump, jump over the moon. Uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to my colleagues at the Borough School of uh, Business and Entrepreneurship. I am very excited to be here. I wish I could be actually sitting beside you and, 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 and just chatting about this, this important subject. Uh, I want to, uh, uh, again, thank you. I want to thank... Uh, uh, Dean Dunn uh, for, for inviting me at this very important uh, stage of our life. Uh, as, as she might have not mentioned, uh, because she's a, a modest leader, uh, that we, uh, we won uh, the Region 6 uh, Presentation Award uh, back in uh, Louisiana in October, uh, the best of the region. Uh, we talked about innovative, innovative teaching, uh, innovative engagement of Generation Z. And this is really a part of that. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, so uh, I wish I could see you guys. So what I would, I would say is, I was asking you a question, how many of you like Christmas? So what I am going to be, what am I going to be doing uh, for the Borough School is that I have provided Dean Dunn a, a, a link, a web link to my, my presentation, uh, along with uh, some other tools and resources uh, that the school can can utilize. So hopefully you guys can 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 engage engage in that. In 2020, for one of my students, and it read like this: uh, "Hey, Dr. Green, I just wanted to thank you for teaching uh, the business communications this semester. It was probably the most fun class I learned a lot. Thanks for keeping it, it quite centered." I'm looking forward to taking another class from you in the fall. So the question is, how many students do you have that would say that about you? And we talk, I'm talking about this micro internship. So I've always, uh, uh, since I've been teaching uh, in 2005 at Knoxville College, which was a historical black college, I've always tried to bring the practical experience of, 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 of learning. Uh, looking at the public perceptions, uh, demographic and technology, just going to quickly go over a couple of those, a couple of those situations. Uh, first of all, uh, the American public is really questioning uh, what, is the, what is the value of edu education? I mean, there, there have been uh, many studies that have been, been done on that. Uh, as we see, uh, uh, people do not trust in, as academic institutions. And what's interesting about that whether you're a Democrat or you're a Republican, overall they have this that same feeling questioning the value of, of an education. And, and basically what a micro, like a traditional internship uh, has the same characteristics. Uh, you, you try to give students some extra uh, practical experience, but what makes it different about the micro internship is that it's done? It's typically done remote. It's, it's done remotely, and it's and it's done for a very specific task. So it's project oriented, which makes it very different. Uh, for us at OBU, uh, it's embedded. So in in my marketing courses, uh, most of my marketing courses, my higher level courses, there's an embedded micro internship, and in that case, I paired I pair those I pair the students up with a business client, uh, it could be all across the world. OK, 
okay, so you mean for the university or for the business you know, school? Like for your course that you're doing the micro. Okay, so that's that's a good. Hey Amen. That's a great question. It, you want you want me to give you the the, the, the pre COVID? I mean, I'll give you my best and my worst. Okay, right now. Okay. So I'm teaching in the spring. So last uh, last semester, I had two classes. Uh, one class was uh, marketing analytics. I had uh, I had tw I, I had twelve students in that class. I had uh, I, I had ten students in the class because I had five teams. So I put two uh, two students in a team. So that class was ten. And then I have a class uh, that I have that has uh, that had 14, stu 14, 14 students, and I had seven teams, and we actually helped eight, 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 uh, eight companies. So that's that's how we laid out. And I think, I think, believe it or not, I think enrollment is is problematic right now uh, for most institutions. And for me, I think I think that's going to be the norm. You mentioned that you um, at some point conducted pre-post tests or surveys. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, what did your outcomes determine? Like, how did you, did you see a big difference between the pre and the post in your results? Let's, so, you know what? I can talk that talk. I think it's better if I show you. Can I show you? Yes. Okay. So here's, this is. Can you can you see my can you see my uh screen? Yes. Okay. So here's an example. So this is uh this is uh this is 2020. So think about this. This is the fall of 2020. So if you know in in uh in the spring we were we were in chaos chaotic mode across the country. So that settled down. So now I'm telling my students you're doing this remote. So this is my digital marketing class. So this is uh you can see there are 13 participants and six business clients, which fits my model. I, I, I like to put people in tools, so that makes sense. So if we look down here, here are the critical critical elements. This is the, their pre-survey, all of them did it, or they're gonna, they're gonna lose their grade. So here's the scale from one to five. And we could communications, this was interesting. Here's these individual students, they're ranking themselves pretty high on communication. See what I'm saying? about the nature of the projects, if they are primarily strategic plans or if your students also do creative execution, for example, with that digital marketing, are they building websites and um, doing ads online? So, so it's, it's, it's all and none. So here's, here's what I'm saying. So in the class, so the power, well, I wish I, wish I could be with y'all. I wish I could be with y'all for a week because here's what I'm saying. So in the, in, in my, in my, in my, uh, courses there's a embedded court a certified a certification so in the certification like they have a digital marketing certification my this semester my introduction to the digital marketing there's an embedded certification so they're learning they're learning what they need to do right so they're doing that so they're becoming certified so the other thing that i teach so so that's the thing they, they have the train they have some training for web development this is the other thing i teach my students that my students are they're not they're not going all the time they're not going to have to so they're gonna be in a situation like like you guys don't sniff, don't tell on yourself. But sometimes the university asks you to do multiple things, and you're only one person. And so you try to do that. And so what I'm teaching my students is how to man. I'm using my skill set of how to manage projects. So right. what I'm using is the gig economy. I'm teaching my students how to hire somebody, a freelancer, to do the work. Like the web development, I had my students. They were hiring. They were hiring a. Uh, they were hiring somebody to do search engine optimization. They were hiring that person. They were working with their business client because they had a skill set. They, they have a certificate. They know what they need. So I'm, I'm teaching them how to do the work because a lot of that, that goes on us in terms of like uh, web development. We got we, we got somebody that does that. OK, but right. for my marketing students, I'm teaching them not only I'm teaching them how to find the resources they can't do it because here's the other thing I'm dealing with a business client. Do you want, do I want them to have a, a GYI uh, website made by the students? Right. Probably, probably not. So, and, and so you're saying, so you have to, you have to scope. Now my students, are, they do, they do the graphic design, they do some things, but if it's not in their billy way and they don't do it well, I'm not going to let them do it because they're going to make, they're going to make, they're going to make the university look bad and myself look bad. And I don't want to do that. So we, we, that's what the scope, scoping it up front is very important. Thank you.
And so you give them a, is that where some of that budget that you mentioned earlier goes yeah, to? Yeah, but that's, things? but, but the, here's, here's the thing, the budget, the budget is, the budget is driven by the client. So I tell the client, at least, at least give them 10 bucks. Give them 10 bucks, because you can't do nothing for free. And most of the clients, I've seen the clients giving the students a thousand bucks. What's your motivation? What motivates you to do what you're doing? I think, so I, I, I great, great, great question. Did, did, you, did you give me a fun fact? Uh, I didn't forget, did you give me a fun fact? Well, my fun fact is I've been following you. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Dunn, make sure she get a prize. Yeah. Uh, I will. Oh, so, so, so you gotta. So, from my my standpoint, okay. So, so I understand. 156 years, uh, Bennett College has been in existence. Okay, and I understand it does have Baptist roots, Northern Baptist, not Southern Baptist. But I think at the end of the day, I've had 20. I had 27 years of successful career. With the Department of Energy, I made I made cheddar. My thing is, I want to I want to I want to build a leg. I want to help some students. I want to help. I want to help the world get better. I'm a change agent. I want the world to be better than than when when I leave the place. Um, I'm sure that we are all so appreciative, and we've learned so much from you. Um, so we appreciate the. Um, your time, we appreciate your expertise, and we appreciate your generosity in sharing your resources with us. And I will make sure that the faculty have all of the items that you have sent them. Mm -hmm.